Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. Today I'm going to make this miter sled. It's perfect for making picture frames or any kind of miter cuts that you want. It's handy and it's accurate and if you stick around I'll show you how to make it. Now before I get started today, I want to remind you, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I invite you to do that. Also, the details of this build will be in an article on Woodwork Web. The link is in des the description box below. Uh, but I also want to reiterate, if you're looking for information uh, on other videos and that, go to the search box in Woodwork Web and put in a, a keyword or two. Uh, you can search the entire site. Uh, you'll be amazed what information you can find quickly and easily. Let's go over to the table saw and get started. Let me go over some of the pieces that I've already cut so we save a little bit of time here. First of all, the base is 24 by 16. Uh, this little piece of wood is 12 by 12. It's going to be my measuring board. Uh, and I have a couple of angle pieces and they're about one and a half by 18. And of course, all of this is three quarter inch. Uh, then I also have some runners, some miter slot runners. So this miter slot material, uh, you can see that I've already pre-drilled some of these. I'm going to countersink all of these and uh, that will make them ready to use. Now I'm also going to attach the arms uh, with screws. I'm going to glue them and screw them, um, but I'm going to countersink those screws and I'll do that right now. I'm also going to drill a couple of countersinks into what's going to be my measuring board here, so I'll just do that. The next thing I want to do is attach my miter slot material. And the way I want to do that, I want to be able to trim this side of the board off with the blade. So what I want to do, first of all, is I want to make sure that the, there's enough wood on here that I can trim that off with. So the slider miter slot material that I'm going to put on the first strip is going to want to go in there like that so that I will be able to run that through and get a nice even line. So what I'm going to do now is mark this like that, pull my miter slot material out and I want to be able to mark where these holes are. So I'm going to put a line there and I'm going to put lines all the way across here. So that line is where my light miter slot material, the plastic is going to sit and that aligns with all of the holes that I've already pre-drilled. Now when I put my miter slot material in, you'll notice that it's slightly lower than the top of the table saw. So what I want to do, I want to raise it just a little bit. So I'm going to put some washers in there and that'll elevate it. And now when I put that in, and set that like that and align that little piece of... With my 18 gauge pinner, I can actually pin right through the plywood and into the plastic. And that's why I want all this stuff to line up because I want to make sure that I get some good pinning right close to where those holes are. Now when I take this material and put it in the slot here and cut, lift this up here, and you'll see in a few minutes why this is so important. Now I'm going to make a perfectly straight line down this edge that's absolutely parallel with my miter slot. You know, I was going to put a second uh, slot in here, but when I test this one, it's nice and firm and snug, and there's absolutely no play in it, so I'm just going to leave it with one. And the only one that was absolutely perfect at 90 degrees is this one, and that's why I put that mark there. Okay. 
Okay, now that, we know where that is, but we don't know exactly where 45 degrees is. Now, here's some of the, the, the issues. This particular square is, it actually is 45 degrees. It's not 90 degrees, but it is 45 degrees because I checked it. The other thing you might be tempted to use is a tri-square, and a tri-square will work. If you have a good quality one, you've paid, you know, like $100 or something for a good quality one, this one is not one of those. This is an inexpensive one, and when I check it at the 45 degree, it's off by at least a degree, so it's not good enough. What I'm going to show you today is how you can use your square to get an absolutely perfect 45 degree angle. So here we go, Colin back to his magnets again. And what I'm going to do, if I can get these apart, I'm going to put one magnet under, oh, let's say six there and six down here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to line up the very tip of number six here with the edge. Remember we made that edge straight and I'm, and I'm going to do the same thing down here and all the magnets are doing is just stopping it from moving around on me. It just gives me a, a little bit better um, a, a little bit better security uh, from stopping that from moving around. So there's the lower one and there's the upper one. Now if I take this and slide that along, and that's what the magnets help me do, is just move that along. I can make sure that that, double check, and double check. Now the first thing I want to do obviously is cut my angles on each one of these, but I have to be careful that I don't um, put uh, the blade <laughs> into that screw there. Uh, if I'd have been uh, a little thinking a little ahead a bit better, I would have put that screw back there. So there's something you can learn from uh, something I did that might have been a problem. So I'm just going to go ahead now and just cut those. The next thing I need to do is cut these. And remember, I had that screw up here, and I thought, you know what? I think that screw is too close here, so I decided to move it back before I made that cut. I just didn't want to hit that uh, screw in there. So I started to cut it, and then I thought, no, I could just move that screw back. So that's what I did. So there's something you could learn from, uh, from my mistake there. So I'm just going to go ahead, and I'll cut it all the way through this time. And the, remember, the blades wound all the way up on this one as well. Okay, now I can move that in, and uh, actually had lots of room there, but uh, you never know. Now the next thing I want to do, I'm going to put some glue. Now, I'm, as you can tell, I'm using some, uh, I think they were old doors. I'm just going to rub some sandpaper on that so that I rough that up because I want to glue that and screw it on both sides, and I've already countersunk that, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Now one of the last things I need to do is make some stopper blocks. So that's all those stoppers look like, uh, and they're beveled on one side and flat on the other, so you can use them either way, whatever, whatever works best for you. What I've decided to add is a cover, and I've drilled a couple holes in a piece of plastic, and it's up above the, the blade, so there's lots of room in there. Okay, I have some off cuts here, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, we'll see if we can make a picture frame.
Okay, let's see how those line up. There you go. Nice tight corners all the way around. That's exactly what we're looking for. Well, and that's what that miter sled looks like. It almost looks like a, a model airplane or something, but in fact, it's for making picture frames or all sorts of miter cuts uh, and works great. And you know, if you take your time making sure you get these angles right, you'll get perfect corners every time. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.